Okay, things you cannot do on the GED, and this is with respect to math. Okay, so these are some. Uh, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you basically three things. Okay, and if you run into these situations, you can't do these in mathematics. So um, uh, there'll be. There's a lot, I'm kind of going to hedge what I'm going to say a little bit. In much more advanced mathematics, you can kind of take a look at this um, a little bit deeper. Uh, look into these issues, but with respect to the GED, these are going to be kind of hard and fast rules for you to follow. So let's take a look at the first thing, okay? The first thing is dividing a number by zero, right? So if I said, uh, what is zero divided by 20, okay? So let's take a look at this scenario, and you might see that this way, zero divided by 20, okay? Now let's take a look at another problem that looks kind of like this, but it's the opposite. It would be, say, 20 divided by 0, all right? Or over here, 20 divided by 0. So they look similar, okay? But obviously, they're, they're uh, inverses or, uh, of one another. They're, they're flipped, okay? So let's take a look at the first situation. What do you think the answer to this is? 0 divided by 20. I'm going to give you a little pop quiz here. 0 divided by 20. What do you think the answer to this question is here? Okay, so if you said zero, you would be correct. So you can divide zero by any number you like, and the answer will be zero in math. Okay, so just think about it this way. Let's say you have, uh, you and your friends have, let's say you have 20 friends in a room, okay, and you guys have collectively zero dollars, right? And you say, okay, let's all divide up uh, that zero dollars amongst us 20 different ways. Each of you are going to get zero dollars, right? So dividing a number, or excuse me, a zero divided by a number is okay. Is okay to do in math. The answer is always zero. Now, this is the first situation I want you to know that you cannot do in math. You can never, right, and this is for all levels of mathematics, is divide a number by zero. Okay, so if you get, if you're doing some sort of calculation and you're getting zero in your denominator or you're trying to divide by zero, you have what we call an undefined situation, okay? So just, you can actually go into your calculator and plug this in, you'll see you'll get some sort of error message, all right? And just think about that logically. Let's say you have um, uh, your 20 friends here, right? And you guys want to split up maybe in groups of zero, I mean, how do you do that, right? It doesn't even make sense, right? Or uh, use any number of different um, uh, examples you can kind of think of, but this is not a logical scenario. So the first thing is you can never, ever divide by zero. Very important because when you're doing kind of like you're, you're figuring something out and, and you, you're, you're running to a calculation where you have this, more likely than not, especially in a GED, they're not going to throw you that kind of curveball, you know, um, they could potentially, but chances are if you run into this, then you've, you've probably made an error, okay? And the technical uh, answer to this, 20 uh, divided by zero, or any number divided by zero is called undefined, okay? It's undefined, but you cannot do this in mathematics. All right, let's take a look at the next thing, okay? So that's the first one. You can never divide a number by zero. Now, this one is a little bit different because in math, in more advanced mathematics, okay, um, you can do what I'm going to be talking about, but let me just kind of get into it, right? So the second thing that on a GED you're likely not going to be able to do is divide by, or take the square root of a negative number, excuse me. So let's go ahead and give you a little pop quiz. What is the square root of 25, okay? So if you don't even know what the answer to this is, then you're going to have to do some more <laughs> review to get ready for the GED, but the square root is basically, it's a question that, that's asking this number. Say, hey, what number times itself is equal to 25? Okay, so not what, not two different numbers. It's got to be the exact same number. So what number times itself gets me back to 25? Of course, the answer is 5, okay? Because you have 5 times 5 is 25. Now, Something you need to know for the GED for sure is your negative numbers, right? So let me go ahead and erase this here. Another way to get back to 25 is to multiply negative 5 
times negative 5, okay? Because a negative times a negative is positive. So you have two ways of getting back to 25 here. So the square root of 25, all right, is technically both plus and minus 5, both positive and negative 5. And this is actually, in, in math, how you would write that, okay? Plus or minus 5 is the, is the correct answer, not just 5, okay? Not just a positive 5. You're only giving me um, one half of, of the total answer, okay? So plus and minus 5. So let's get to the second thing that you can't do, all right? What if I said find the square root of negative 25, so negative 25, you'd be like, hmm, let's see here. Um, well, maybe that's negative times negative because you're thinking in your mind negative. Well, you can't go negative 5 times a positive 5. That's the only way you're going to get back to negative 25. But the definition of a square root, okay, it has to be the same number. So you can never get back to, you can never get back to the same um, number negative you have to have different signs so in this case all right on the GED you would have you would you could potentially have what we say like no solutions okay that might be a choice all right that you might have but technically speaking in mathematics we deal with this all the time in more in more advanced math um, I'd be really surprised if this was on uh, the GED but just so you know there's something called complex complex and imaginary numbers, okay? So to deal with this, that technical uh, answer here, and I'm going to write it down here, the square root of negative 25 is something we would call five plus or minus five i, okay? i is this little imaginary number deal. So if you saw that with a negative square root, okay, then you might, you know, this, maybe this video will pop into your head. But more than likely than not, I'd be very surprised that they would have this on the GED. Um, so you're looking at no solutions. So let's kind of go ahead and review. All right, let me just kind of erase this. So there's two things that we have, okay? And the one is an absolute thing in mathematics, okay? So the first one was dividing by zero, right? So any number divided by zero, undefined. Just you cannot do it, okay? That's for all math. The second thing is a square root of a negative number, okay? Here, you're likely talking about no solutions, okay? Let me write this better. No solutions, and technically, this is correct because we're really talking about what we call no real number solutions. Real numbers, just so you, if uh, you can think back in your days of learning maybe middle school or high school math, Maybe your teacher had something on the um, on the uh, classroom wall. It looks like a number line. It's zero here, like one, two, three. Then it had like negative one, negative two, negative three in this direction. Uh, this is pretty common in a lot of math classrooms, like a long kind of like tape thing that's on the wall. But all these numbers are on here. You got positive. You got the positive numbers. You got fractions. Like say for example, one half is here. This would be negative one half. You would have decimals like over here, maybe 3.14, etc. All these numbers on this number line are called the real numbers. Okay, that's 99.9% .9 of what you're going to be dealing with on the GED. Remember, this is this video is catered towards um, you know what you're going to find on the GED. So the square root of a negative number is technically there's no real number solutions. Okay, so but there are what we call complex or imaginary solutions, just in case you know you do run into that scenario. But you can pretty much take this to the bank that you're not going to see that. You're not going to see complex or imaginary numbers on the GED. That's something you would see for sure, like let's say on the SAT or ACT um, kind of test. All right, so let me go ahead and give you one last thing that you could potentially see on the GED, and this is not, it's not a rule that you can't do, it's just a common mistake people do with calculators. I this, uh, wanted to throw this in as just a little tip, okay? So, this is a good tip, because people make this mistake all the time. Let's suppose you wanted to find out what five to the two-thirds power is, okay? Five to the two-thirds power. Now, if you're using a calculator, the way that would look like it was this. You're going to go 5 now to the 2 thirds power, okay? 
you would use a little button on your calculator that looks like this. Okay, see the little Y to the X. Sometimes it's like a little X to the Y. You kind of want to locate that. There's another button. It's called a caret key. It looks like this. So you're going to have one of these three buttons. Okay, one of these three buttons. So you would type in five, and let's go ahead and use this caret key. This is pretty common. This one here. All right. Now what you're doing, what you've done, okay, is when you typed in five, you, you're you're doing this part. Then when you plugged in your caret key, okay, when you did this, okay, you got this. Now you're ready to type in your power, okay, your exponent part, all right? So that's what's going to come next. So this is where students make uh, a huge error, all right? So you're probably saying, well, that's going to be 5 to the, okay, 2 thirds power. So maybe you would just go like this, 2 divided by 3 on your calculator. And that look, that's clearly like a logical thing to do. But this would be incorrect, okay? You would get the wrong answer here, okay? And I've seen this over and over and over again. This is something that students just make a mistake on. So in order to fix this, you have to use parentheses. you got to type in those little parentheses in on your calculator to do this. So uh, if you don't do that, you're going to get something different. I'm not going to get into what you get, but it's not going to be the right answer. So in this case, if you wanted to find any number to a exponent, all right, to a power that's some sort of fractional power, it would be the number, okay? So let's do it. Let's kind of write out the whole thing, what you would type out in this uh, problem. It would be 5, caret key, okay, the parentheses, open parentheses, okay, 2, and then you would do the division, okay, then 3, and then end parentheses, and then equal, okay? So this is a tip, but it's a common, common mistake that I, that, uh, you know, students confuse. So if I say, no, let me give it to you here in this video. Um, but so in review, okay, you can never divide by zero. Okay. You just cannot do that. All right. Square root of a negative number for your solutions. No, it's, you're not going to have a solution. So no solution, no real number solution. And the last but not uh, least, this tip on using your calculator. You remember those three things that get keep you away from a lot of trouble on the GED. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel. And by the way, if uh, if you don't know, and I'll leave you my um, free uh, GED math course. Okay? I've gotten tremendous feedback over the years with that. I'm really happy I put this uh, together. Just literally thousands of people have passed uh, using my course. So I want to invite you to GED Math Lessons lessons.com okay so it's a totally free comprehensive uh, video-based uh, uh, math course uh, specifically for the GED and um, so come on over I'll leave you the uh, link and uh, the description of this video and please subscribe and have a great day thanks for watching